Chaitanya Prabhu Nityaka, Shri Advaita Gadadara, Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So we're continuing to read from Srimad Bhagavatam, we are on Canto 4, Chapter 8, Text 62. Iti Uktastam Parikramya. Iti Uktastam Parikramya. Pranamya cha nipar bhakaha. Pranamya cha nipar bhakaha. Yayao madhuvanam punyam. Yayao madhuvanam punyam. Areesh charana charchitam. Areesh charana charchitam. Translation and for uh, translation by his divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Samishla Prabhupada. When Dhruv Maharaj, the son of the king, was thus advised by the great sage Narad, he circumambulated Narad, his spiritual master, and offered him respectful obeisances. Then he started for Madhuvan, which is always imprinted with the lotus footprints of Lord Krishna, and which is therefore especially auspicious. The Raj Bhumi, the Raj Bhumi is always imprinted with the lotus feet of Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna has performed very, very wonderful pastimes there. And the lotus footprints of the Lord are there. The Lord has, the feet of the Lord has these most auspicious markings like the Urdhavareka, the barley corn, the corn shell, the, the flag, the lotus flower, so many. And when he would walk on this, Braj Raj, that's why Braj Raj is so, it's, it's so fortunate to get some Braj Raj on our head or to roll in the dust of Braj because, because Lord Krishna has walked over this and his devotees. So many devotees, when before they enter Vrindavan, then they offer dandavats. They get down from whatever they're traveling. They offer, offer, offer obeisances to Vrindavan, roll in the dust of Vrindavan. Tapovanam gatetas men. Tapovanam gatetas men. Pravishto anta puram munihe. Pravishto anta puram munihe. Arhi tarhana ko rajna. Arhi tarhana ko rajna. Sukhasana uvachatam. Sukhasana uvachatam. After Dhruv entered Madhuvan forest to execute devotional service, the great sage Nara thought it wise to go to the king to see how he was faring within the palace. When Narad Muni approached, the king received him properly, offering him due obeisances. After being seated comfortably, Narad began to speak. So, you know, Dhruv Maharaj could not send a WhatsApp to his dad, father saying, okay, dad, I'm all right, you know. Then... In those days, there was no WhatsApp or emails or telephone. So how would news be going from one place to another? The great sages would do that. Narad Muni is one such great sage. So he's gone to speak to the father of Dhruv Maharaj. Narad Vacha Rajan Kim Dhyaya Sedirgham. Narad Vacha Rajan Kim Dhyaya Sedirgham. Mukhena Parishusyata. Mukhena Parishusyata. Kimvana Rishyate Kamo. Kimvana Rishyate Kamo. Dharmo Vartena Samyutaha. Dharmo Vartena Samyutaha. The great sage Narada inquired, my dear king, your face appears to be withering up and you look like you have been thinking of something for a very long time. Why is that? Have you been hampered in following your path of religious rights, economic development and sense gratification? So by looking at the face of the king, 
Narad Muni could re understand that the king has either been worried, like really worried about something, or is it that he's not following his duties properly? Or what's happening? But something looks wrong. The four stages of advancement of human civilization are religiosity, economic development, sense gratification, and for some, the last stage of liberation. So the Vedas, Vedas mainly deal with this, Dharma, Artha, Kama, and Moksha. So usually many people will just stay on till Dharma, Artha, Kama, do, do pious activities to get pious results. As a result of pious results, we get more opulence, more wealth. And with that, we can enjoy more. And then some also understand that, oh, I'm enjoying so much, I have so much, but yet that I feel frustrated with this material world. Then they strive for moksha, liberation. But only um, Narad Muni did not inquire from the king about his liberation, but only regarding the state management, which is meant for advancement of the three principles, religiosity, economic development, and sense gratification. Since those who engage in such activities are not interested in liberation, Nara did not inquire from the king about this. Liberation is meant for persons who have lost all interest in religious, ritualistic ceremonies, economic development, and sense gratification. So when one realizes, oh, there is really no, uh, but nothing for me to gain by engaging in mundane religious activities to get some economic development, to engage in sense gratification, then one will, with all their might, try for liberation. Not easy, not easy. That's a very few, very few. Rajo vacha sutome balako brahman. Rajo vacha sutome balako brahman. Strene na karunatmana. Strene na karunatmana. Nirva sita pancha varsha. Nirva sita pancha varsha. Saha matra mahan kavihi. Saha matra mahan kavihi. The king replied, O best of the brahmanas, I'm very much addicted to my wife and I'm so fallen that I've abandoned all merciful behavior, even to my son, who is only five years old. I have banished him and his mother, even though he's a great soul and a great devotee. In this, so the father realizes already that Dhruva is a great devotee. In this verse, there are some specific words which are to be understood very carefully. The king said that since he was very much addicted to his wife, he had lost all his mercy. That is the result of becoming too affectionate toward women. The king had two wives. The first wife was Suniti and the second was Suruchi. He was too attached to the second wife, however, so he could not behave well with Dhruv Maharaj. You know, it happens. We may, because we are so attached to one, we may neglect the other. That was the cause of Dhruva's leaving home to perform austerities. Although as a father, the king was affectionate toward his son, he minimized his affection for Dhruva Maharaj because he was too much addicted to the second wife. Now he was repenting that both Dhruv Maharaj and his mother Suniti were practically banished. So, you know, we may also do that. Out of too much affection for one, then we are <laughs> not being fair to another. Dhruv Maharaj went to the forest and since his mother was being neglected by the king, she was therefore almost banished also. The king repented having banished his boy for Dhruv was only five years old and a father should not banish his wife and children or neglect their maintenance. Repentant over his neglect of both Suniti and her son, he was morose and his face appeared withered. 
According to Manu Smriti, one should never desert, des desert his wife and children. In a case where the wife and children are disobedient and do not follow the principles of home life, they are sometimes given up. But in the case of Dhruv Maharaj, this was not applicable because Dhruv was very mannerly and obedient. Moreover, he was a great devotee. Such a person is never to be neglected, yet the king was obliged to banish him. Now he was very sorry. So the father, the king, is repenting at his action. He's understanding that he is not being fair. Api anatham vane brahman. Api anatham vane brahman. Ma samadanti arbakam rikaha. Ma samadanti arbakam rikaha. Shanantam sha shayanam. Shuditam Shantam Shayanam Shuditam Parim Parimlana Mukam Bujam Parimlana Mukam Bujam My dear Brahmana, the face of my son was just like a lotus flower. I'm thinking of his precarious condition. He's unprotected and he might be very hungry. He might have lain down somewhere in the forest and the wolves might have attacked him to eat his body. Aho me bata dauratam yam. Aho me bata dauratam yam. Stri jita syopadharaya. Sri Jitta Shopadharaya Yo Ankam Prema Nururukshanantam Yo Ankam Prema Nururukshanantam Nabhyanan Dhanam Asatam Maha Nabhyanan Dham Asatam Maha Alas, just see how I was conquered by my wife. Just imagine my cruelty. Out of love and affection, the boy was trying to get up on my lap, but I did not receive him, nor did I even pat him for a moment. Just imagine how hard-hearted I am. So the king is really repenting. Naraduvacha. Narit Uvacha Mama Sucha Swatanayam Mama Sucha Swatanayam Deva Guptam Visham Pate Deva Guptam Visham Pate Tat Prabhavam Avigya Avigya Tat Prabhavam Avigya Pravring te yad yasho jagad. Pravring te yad yasho jagad. The great sage Narada replied, My dear king, please do not be aggrieved about your son. He is well protected by the supreme personality of God, Godhead. Although you have no actual information of his influence, his reputation is already spread all over the world. Sometimes when we hear that great sages and devotees go to the forest and engage themselves in devotional service or meditation, we become surprised. How can one live in the forest and not be taken care of by anyone? But the answer given by a great authority, Narad Muni, is that such persons are well protected by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. We forget that Krishna is protecting each and every one of us. In our, even, even in our daily lives we forget that it's Krishna who's taking care of us we think we are the we are the one because I am doing this that's, the re that's how I'm protecting myself uh, but then we should not also say well anyway Krishna is taking care of me so I don't need to do anything let me leave everything to him 
But he tells Arjuna, no, you do your duty. But you give up the result. Sharanagati or surrender means acceptance or firm belief that wherever the surrendered soul lives, he is always protected by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He is never alone or unprotected. Avishya Rakshibe Krishna. That is the mood of the pure devotee. Krishna is always taking care. Dhruva Maharaj, his affectionate father, thought this young, his young boy, only five years old, to be in a very precarious position in the jungle. But Narad Bani assured him, you do not have sufficient information about the influence of your son. Anyone who engages in devotional service anywhere within this universe is never unprotected. Krishna says those, those great souls those great souls are under the protection of my divine energy. So the devotees who are engaged in devotional service are under the protection of the internal energy of Krishna. Uh, devotional service is on the spiritual platform. It's the jurisdiction of the internal energy of Srimati Radharani, not of Maya Devi. That's, the, that's a different department. The devotional service comes under the protection directly of Srimati Radhana. And Krishna himself says it in the Bhagavad Gita also, that those great souls are under the protection of my divine energy. Sudukshram Karma Kritva Sudukshram Karma Kritva Loka Paler Api Prabhu Loka Paler Api Prabhu Yeshyati Achirato Rajan Yeshyati Achirato Rajan Yasho Vipula Yamstava Yasho Vipula Yamstava my dear king, your son is very competent. He will perform activities which would be impossible even for great kings and sages. Very soon he will complete his task and come back home. You should know that he will also spread your reputation all over the world. Here in this verse, Narad Muni has described Dhruv Maharaj as Prabhu. Um, so he's described him as Prabhu. This word is applicable to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Sometimes the spiritual master is addressed, addressed as Prabhupada. Prabhu means the Supreme Personality of Godhead and Pad means host. According to Vaishnava philosophy, the spiritual master occupies the post of the Supreme Personality of Godhead or in other words, he is the bona fide representative of the Supreme Lord. So the spiritual master, he's authorized by Krishna to represent him. Just for example, the government of India authorizes the embassy of India, say in Taiwan, to represent the Indian government there. Authorized representative. That is how it means. <laughs> So the spiritual master, the bona fide spiritual master is authorized by Krishna to represent him. You know, we, we send, for example, one country will send a delegate, delegation to another country. So then that person represents that country. It's the same way. The spiritual master is representing Krishna. He's giving us the message of Krishna. He's not Krishna, but he's the most dear servant of Krishna. He can bring us to Krishna. Dhruv Maharaj is also described here as Prabhu because he's an Acharya of the Vaishnav school. So Prabhu, so that was one meaning. And then another is that he's an Acharya. Another meaning of Prabhu is the master of the senses, just like the word Swami. So Prabhu, Master of the senses. Swami means someone who's controlled his senses. Another significant word, 
word is su dushkaram, very difficult to perform. What was the task that Dhruv Maharaj undertook? The most difficult task in life is to satisfy the Supreme Personality of Godhead and Dhruv Maharaj would be able to do that. So why is it difficult to satisfy the Supreme Lord? Because we are always thinking, how can I please myself? We are, <laughs> we are always putting our self in the center. So all our energy is going to, towards that end. But the real purpose is to satisfy Krishna. Then everyone gets satisfied. Not easy. That's why it said bhakti is not easy. It's simple. Very simple. But not easy. We must remember that Dhruv Maharaj was not fickle. He was determined to execute his service and then come back. So Dhruva, Dhruv Maharaj had this great determination. You know, we even in any... Any goal we set up, if anything we want to do, we are always determined that I'm going to do it. And then we put in great effort and endeavor to be able to do it. It could be anything. It could be like, oh, this is my, my uh, exercise routine, for example, or I, I need to take up this, this job, or I need to take up this study. So no matter what comes, we are determined that I'm going to do it. So here, Roof Maharaj is made up his mind that he is going to satisfy Krishna and he's determined. Every devotee therefore should be determined that in this life he will be able to satisfy the Supreme Personality of Godhead and by that process go back home, back to Godhead. That is the perfection of the mission, highest mission of life. Determination. Shila Rupa Goswami in his Nectar of uh, Instruction also says that a devotee should have determination, patience, enthusiasm. So this determination is needed. And what is the determination? That is, I will please the Lord and get out of here. I will not take birth again in this material world. I want to go back home, back to Godhead back to Golok Vrindavan, back to spiritual world. And Lord Chaitanya has made this process easy for us. It's not easy. But Lord Chaitanya, he's openly giving the Hare Krishna mantra to anyone and everyone. And he's saying, just chant this mantra, take up this mantra and get Krishna Prema. Go back home, back to Godhead. Did anyone want to add or comment to anything that we have been reading? No, then maybe um, let's be honest. Yeah. Hey, Maitriya Vacha Iti Devarshina Proktam. Maitriya Uvacha Iti Devarshina Proktam. Vishrutya Jagati Patihi. Vishrutya Jagati Pati. Raja Lakshmi Anadritya. Putram Eva Evan Vachintayat Putram Evan Vachintayat The great Maitreya continued. The king, Uttanpath, after being advised by Narad Muni, practically gave up all duties in relation with his kingdom, which was very vast and wide opulent like the goddess of fortune. And he simply began to think of his son, Dhruva. So Naradhuni is telling the king that your son is a great devotee and he's famous all over the universe. And the king is relieved now. You know, he was so worried that what's happening to my son? Is he even alive or he's been eaten up by the wild animals? And now he's just Thinking of his great great son. So we can stop here for today if no one has anything to add or question. Srimad Bhagavatam ki Cheshla Prabhupada ki Che Gaur Bhakta Vrindi ki Hare Krishna. Thank you so much. 
Anyone for listening and joining and Haribo. I can't get to it. What's happening? I'm not able to. Okay. <laughs>